Oh, maybe the door or Drake's going to connect. Applied allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, John. Here. Dale. Here. Mark is not going to be here. Sean. Here. Troy is here. Are there any additions or corrections to the agenda? The agenda is presented. <coughs> Been moved by Dale to approve the agenda. Is there a second to the motion? Second. Seconded by Sean. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. Uh -huh. Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Take a look at the December 7th meeting minutes. first page or oh. just a typo okay. where it says build or it's I think it's just supposed to be bill right here oh okay yes thank you okay. Okay, page. Sherman, bottom of this last paragraph Sherman Olson opened the floor to discuss the abatements motion by Peterson to approve the abatement it should be to discuss abatements Take out the da and take out the other da. Motion by Peters to approve abatement 21 four zero zero. Say that one more time. I'm sorry. Take the two da's out, out of there. The okay. The abatements okay. and the abatement. Okay, got it. Got it. And then I'm gonna erase that s after the abatements because there was just one. Yeah, room. We can tell them what we're discussing about Christmas Eve. We'll stop the next page. Uh, Chairman Olson opened the floor to discuss Christmas Eve. It probably should be Chairman Olson opened the floor to discuss courthouse hours of operation on Christmas Eve. Okay. And then the same thing in the next paragraph. Uh, Chairman Olson opened the floor to discussion on Riggs County. 2019 Briggs County Commission meetings. Okay. Time and date. Come what we're discussing. Although the next the next sentence kind of spells it out. But. So what we were discussing was the 2019 Briggs County Commission meetings. Time and dates. Times and dates. Okay. Time and dates. Dates and time. Dates. Perfect. And I wasn't a phonics teacher either. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really bad with with. But you were hooked on them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 other things. <laughs> Approve the minutes as amended. So moved. moved by Dale. Second. Second by Sean. Is there any discussion? Any discussion? Any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. <coughs> Motion carries. Okay, we'll take a look at the bill. 
These bills have been highlighted for need. Balances are over. No. Correction will go over. So the elections is going to go over. Um, share fuel is going to go over. Recorder dues, that'll go over. Um, I th that one is I th pretty sure that one's for next year, and we've been holding off on a lot of those until next year, so that it comes out of next year's budget. Mm -hmm. um, so, so general treasurer and supplier over. Yep. Mm -hmm. Question on one, well, on page. second page. Okay. Jennifer Martin's all those accounts go. Um, that's an abatement. That's the abatement you guys approved uh, okay. last week. Yep. Okay. Yep. Gotcha. You notice that Barnes County Correctional on there. Um, <clears throat> you know, I thought we were banned from there. But apparently not. <laughs> um, and I, I don't know if you guys read that article in the Grand Forks Herald about those guys down there being downgraded again. Mm -hmm. um, and I saw so I emailed Wes today, just because I was curious about this, and he said he wasn't going to be in town, so he isn't going to be able to talk to us about it. But then I asked him about that too, and he said they're not going to go down there anymore after that deal yeah i don't i mean i don't i don't think, see how i don't we, think we, we can when, we're, when it's a deficient facility how can we send people there yeah. and expose ourselves i mean it's fine if they're exposed to the liability of it but now then if we know what we're exposing Briggs county to the liability so he's not planning to send people isn't the maximum stay like four days now or something 96 hours. Yeah, 90, 96 hours. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that dues for the County Recorders Association, that's for next year. Um, so if you would, you know, go ahead and pay that this time, it'll just, won't be out of next year's budget, or we can just wait and, and wait. Okay, yep, yep. I was just looking at that. Did Schultz's do something here, or is it just the right bill? Um, Schultz, um, the heat in Kelly's office went out, so they had to go and look at it a few times, and then they ordered parts, had to come back. So, yeah, that was the heat for Kelly's office. She just brought a new furnace. They, they get oh, twenty three hundred bucks. Yeah. So the general treasury supplies for the money is that something that could be held up to make sure for those money? Um <coughs> Page are you on there? That's on number the second page. Right below the three quarters do the most for treasure supplies. Uh, yeah. so both, okay. Both those accounts are over anyway. Mm -hmm. yeah, but they've been over. I know. Okay, pro forms. Here's 
that one. So that's for um, statements and the envelopes for these um, tax statements. Mm -hmm. That's what that is. And TJ's. That one's not over though. TJ's isn't. Um, the TJ's electronics mm -hmm. for the recorder's office. That one is. Mm -hmm. Oh. Um, yeah. And that's for toner cartridge for her um, printer and. <coughs> Um, labels. That's that one. What did you say? I'm sorry. What's your Equipment. Account? Just, equipment. Yeah, equipment budget. Um, major equipment and training equipment. Major yeah. equipment has been taken out. There's nothing budgeted for this year. Mm -hmm. Actually, it is. It's in the general fund. Is that what? Yeah. yeah. He actually got some donation money for those. So can we see the $4,685 invoice and the uniforms and the $2,000 and the $2,000 for training? Okay, so... Got it. Aren't these in alphabetic order? Apparently not. Yep, they should be. <coughs> Vendor? Yep. <clears throat> this Taser International, that's the one you're looking for. Yep, right. right. Did you find it? Which, what's the amount of invoice? 4485. 2800 for training and 1685 for uniforms. It's not alphabetical order in my alphabet. But. Okay. 
Um, we usually put it in the order that it would be like check number order, which is usually in the vendor uh, or you know the vendor number, but sometimes it gets gets off. So let's go through. What was wrong with your heat, Kelly? Do you know? There was some part. They had uh, ice. And I heard them grumbling, but <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it was electrical language or something. I don't understand. But they had to replace something on this, I believe. Yeah. They're not bashful. They're not bashful. Holy smokes. Let me run to the Seven hundred and fifty two dollars parts and fourteen hundred and twenty five dollars labor. Does it have a labor itemized? Yep. No. No. <clears throat> Just one number. Right, but I mean not no hours or no, no, no. days or no. So how long was it? We were here a couple days. I think we had to depart and then come back if there were two or three days, maybe. All day long? Mm -hmm. One There's day no day. way. It would have been cheaper to put a new furnace in. Mm -hmm. I, I think they had just, because my door was open, and I just heard them say something like that. So it would have been like this. I'm doing this. I have no replacement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like typical labor from me. <coughs> so 
but I shouldn't be grumbling. <laughs> <laughs> Sound like Darren and Gavin on the Christmas story. <laughs> you heard tap dancing. So the reason we couldn't find it is because the the, uh, <clears throat> the voucher is not to Taser Interna International. It's to Axon Enterprise. Axon. Yeah. Huh? They changed their name. I just read it on their website. Oh. And what's it for then? <clears throat> it's like three tasers. <clears throat> Six 15 foot smart cartridges, so this thing will shoot. Well, you've got a wire on it. Well. 10 25 foot smart cartridges, so that they're one time deals or something. Yeah. Right hand holster, I suppose left hand holster, it shoots it out, two it? right hand holsters and a left hand holster. Um, three tasers, three battery packs. So if you're 26 feet away, you're okay. <laughs> <laughs> so the total is $4,485. You found it? Sure I did. Oh good. Just by accident. Because <laughs> it's not called Taser anymore, oh. it's called Axon. So how do we treat that? I was that? like, what? Well, it should come out of the equipment budget, not the uniform budget. Yeah, you know, that's, that was my question. But training and equipment is, wasn't there enough money in there or something? Yeah, there is enough. I mean, that's where it came out of, was training and equipment. So did he split out the holsters or something as it's all uniforms? It's all equipment. I mean, I don't. I mean, Forty-four eighty-five. We can't ask him because he's not in town. So, I mean, the amount of check is for forty-four eighty-five. So that's all of it. Uniform and equipment. That's what it's coming out of, right? Uniform and training. Um. Sounds like equipment, right? Well, the training is training and equipment. It's not just training. Okay. Yeah, it's called training and equipment. And the yeah. other is uniforms. That's why I said, well, maybe he's calling the holsters something and the uh, taser something else. I, I don't know how, why it's split out this way, but the holsters wouldn't add up to sixteen eighty five. But they're two. I mean, the holsters are two hundred twenty five dollars. I I don't get it, but. Take a note for next next budget cycle. Then. Or you just want to take it all out of training and equipment, or? Well, I mean, if there isn't. There if, is if enough money in the training and equipment. He's he still has three thousand dollars. In training, there's still three it shows. Um, that yes. Shows three hundred fifty. Three hundred fifty-six dollars. And that's after this is. Written. Right. Yeah. 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 But there isn't enough to do the entire amount. Right, right. Yep, yep. Well, that's why it, that's why he did that. Yeah. <clears throat> and I mean, no can't take sixteen hundred dollars. Well, we could do that, and and a, adjust the budget or whatever. But but what's the point? No, no. But I mean, the point is, if if there is budgeted money that hasn't been used for the line item, then what's the use of budgeting? Right. Yeah. It, it makes budgeting more accurate. To right. Yeah. Actually, <laughs> take it from where it should come from. Should come from. You know, otherwise we wouldn't line item any budgets. We would just give a lump sum. That's true. And let it go. And so, do you want all of it coming out of training and equipment, and then we? Uh, well, it would have to. We'll have to. That won't work. No. I, I mean, for next budget cycle, we'll have to make a note that. Well, why wouldn't it work now? It would just go over on that. It'd go over, but then we can't let the budget go over, then we'd have to do something with it anyway. We'd have to just take the money out of some road of his budget to make it balance. Right, but we'd know next year when we look back at this one oh. what was spent out of each account. Oh. If you do if you allow the split to take place, then it's gonna disappear. Right. Unless yeah. unless you write it on the back so of your head. You're gonna make a not a mental note, you're gonna make an actual note on the in the budget by doing that. Right, we'll have to amend the budget to fix the line item. Seem more accurate than if we look back. But if you it's don't, there. if you don't follow the process, then you can never recreate I, it. I, I see your problem. I, I, I agree. Yeah. 
So do you want it all to come out of the training and equipment? I sure that's my think question. that's what it should come out of. I mean, that was your original question, correct? Mm -hmm. that, that'll be trail. If we do it as it is now, it won't leave You know, trail. maybe they won't need tasers again for five years or something, so maybe it won't do us much good. I don't know. But I can't ask the question because there's nobody to ask. I agree. Okay. Okay. <laughs> To get that change to come all out of the training equipment. Go. And Harold will flag that when he does the audit. And we'll have to amend the budget. Right. Okay. Anything else? Um, Kelly, yours got the dues got taken out just until next year. Then we'll pay it out in next year's budget. The um, North Dakota Recorders Association dues, that'll just come out of next year's budget. So they're just wanting to just Did take it out for just until the January meeting. They had to put that account over when they did that. That's the only thing I take out of that. It's a special dues account. No, this is for 19. So it's you've 2019 already paid, you've dues, already paid right? 2018's dues. This oh, so it's oh, just got to. Yeah. We'll just wait till the next meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Just so it comes out of four. Just so it comes out of 19. Yeah, yeah. I've yeah. yeah. gotten a bunch of them too. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Right. Okay. Gotcha. Not a big deal. Anything else on the bills? I move the approved the bills of presented with the exception of general recovery of dues for two hundred twenty five dollars. It's been and then do you want, can we add this one, please? Um, it's Cooperstown True Value for $269.90. Yeah. Um, it's coming out of General, General Courthouse. Courthouse. That's the 500 pounds of salt. Oh, okay. <laughs> that I was <laughs> jesting at earlier. I want the salt. It's going to be a big margarita party at Christmas. <laughs> Been moved by Dale to approve the bills with the inclusion of the Cooperstown True Value bill and the exclusion of the recorder's dues for 2019. Um, is there a second to the motion? Second. Do we need in that motion to help to change that voucher or not? Um, yes, please. If you just so that I have record that. The sheriff's voucher on uh, make sure it comes tasers, the make sure it all comes out of the, the fund, the equipment, training equipment and training budget. Perfect. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. John? Aye. Dale? Aye. Sean? Aye. Troy votes aye. Motion carried. <laughs> Kelly? because we were talking about doing the uh, we have ITV on there, ITD on ITV. Anyways, I, I don't know if I told you or not, but the state is going to be installing that in our courtroom at no cost to the county, which is 
It's called ITV. I, ITV oh. or the Ivan. Mm. Yeah. So they're going to be installing that. That was one of the things I think we talked about before. I was going to try to get a grant to do that. Um, and they had one this year that they were going to be installing. And it was between Griggs and another county. And we got chosen for it. So that's good. So that's that's at least twelve to thirteen thousand dollars to do that ourselves. So that's interactive or what is that? Yeah, so if um, so if the judge is here and there's a defendant that needs a bond hearing and they're in jail, our law enforcement wouldn't have to drive to pick them up and bring them back here. They could just do it to um, so a lot of times when judge is here for Master Calendar Day, he'll have to do bond hearings for other counties. So he can still do that through the ITV. So that's nice. We don't have to worry about that. So in here, I've got um, two of the same, two of the, the top two things are the same as our last year. We got denied for a grant. I think, I can't remember exactly why my court administrator said there was quite a few that got denied. I just don't know if the funds weren't there or if it went to one part of the county. I can't remember exactly what it was or what part of the state. Um, the computers are, because we have to switch over to Windows 10, so if we could get those covered by the grant, that would be a big savings to the county. So otherwise the top two things were the same as last year. So the cost to the county would be twelve nine seventy four. You're on Windows seven right now? Yep. And the state starting when is that? Is that twenty twenty? Or is it twenty nineteen? Nineteen, I thought. Nineteen or twenty, the state is no longer providing security for Windows 7 so we're all well, going to be in the process of I think Travis has been trying to Microsoft uh, is making noise about quitting patching it but I don't know if it'll happen in, in 2020 or 2022 or so that'd be great if we could get those three computers covered by right. the grants and the county might have to do 100% of that cost so um, it's quite a bit less than what we, I had requested before. I think it was seven or eight thousand, maybe twelve. I don't know exactly what it was, but this is all because we don't have to do that. Either, so. Have you used Windows Ten? What's that? Have you used Windows Ten? Um, no, not well. My computer just died, so about three weeks ago. So slowly transitioning into it. it's not my computer's not 100 percent set up yet so the few things that i have done just struggling to i'm going back and forth between computers right now because some things are working and some things aren't so i'm not fully in windows 10 yet i don't so, really like it yeah. i haven't used it enough yet to judge but it's different of course And this has to be postmarked by December 31st. And they usually hold their meeting January, mid to the end of January. We usually find out February sometime, you know, February, who's awarded what. They don't own the computers in our courtroom? They, they do, the state does, yeah. Those ones are, the state will replace those. But any computer that we use, what are for, these? those are all in my office. We have to have, oh. um, yep, so those are the non-state computers. Okay. <coughs> so you're applying for a grant to replace the computers in your office? Yeah. Do we need a motion? You want to accept we're two spending approvals? Money. We're spending money. We're authorizing the spending money. Yep. I'll, I'll move that we're authorized Kelly to move forward with the uh, grant okay. request. It's been moved by John to have Kelly move ahead with the grant request. Is there a second to the motion? Second. Seconded by Dale. Is there any discussion? <coughs> any discussion? Any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. John? Aye. Dale. All right. Sean. All right. Troy votes aye. Most of And okay. then on that original, if you want to sign at the bottom of it as chairman, you have to Oh, sign. yep. Um, and real quick, if I can just talk.
talk about this real quick. Um, we're all set up for the e-recording, and we've started to receive, we've probably got close to 20 e-recording documents so far. So they're starting to come in, so it's a nice feature. So, have Who, you guys who's started? using it? Um, I'd have to look at who's, who's using it. I'm signed up with four different vendors right now, but... We haven't done it. I think there's the State Bank of Trust is one that's in there right now. I suppose a title company, some of them they guys. They haven't, I haven't got anything yet from them, okay. but they may not know that we're on yet, but I have one right now pending and I have to go through, so it's nice to see it working. Um, I'm so I get emails quite often from the ITD service desk. Do you guys have a lot of service interruptions with the state? Um, I guess nothing that, not a whole lot that I notice. I but see. there are times, I mean, you know, a few times. I just, the reason that it came to mind is I just got an email from them right now. Yeah, uh, there, I mean, it's sporadic throughout the week. We make it a few times. Okay. Um, if they do go out, it's, it's never really for long. But it seems like it's too often. If our vendor was that weak, we'd be mad. Yeah, you get those emails, Sam, too? <laughs> what? Do you get those emails, too? I get emails from ITD. Yeah. yeah. And there's always, you know, like different software, or viruses or scams or things like that. They always email us and stuff like that, too. So wow. Just keep us aware so we're not clicking. Not good stuff. I'll make it Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Kelly. Yeah, Thank you, Kelly. When? It's the responsible charge for a federal aid project, the PCM 2147. Then move by Dale to appoint Wayne Owen as the responsible charge on the bituminous seal coat and incidentals project. Is there a second to the motion? What's the LPA? Oh, Local public agency or yeah, agency. Really. I guess I've never said have we ever seen this before. Yeah, every uh, I was responsible in charge for the bridge <coughs> oh. down there. You know. So well, you guys don't have to be there to touch make sure everything's done correctly. Right, right. Work back. I just don't I don't remember seeing this form before. <laughs> yeah, I, really yeah. anyway. I, think, I think we just made it. I think the motion was made. I kind of lost Albert and then unapproved. 
or you know, past. So then we just sent the letter in. Basically, I just wanted to give you guys a copy of what okay. would be sent. I'll second the motion. Seconded by Sean. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Is there any further discussion? So approve progressive estimates and, and change orders in writing. So theoretically, that could increase the cost of the project. That can't be the decision of one person. Typically, the I guess the Iowa superintendent is typically the respons responsible charge, and they normally would not sign off on a change order without talking to the commission. Approve progressive estimates and change orders in writing. And then, so we, we the whoever does the construction engineering for this would, um, you know, track quantities that the contractor installs, submit a progress estimate in the DOT's automated record system. So basically, they're the third party that's tracking those estimates. The, then the county would concur. As a responsible that. charge, they will be familiar with the day-to-day -day activities on the project. Project schedule, approved progressive estimates, and change orders in writing. Yep, so usually that's done with an email. Is that? But what my point is a, a change order that, or, or a progressive estimate, which means an estimate I believe that is, is changed during the course of the project, the only the county commission has the ability to spend money. Mm -hmm. so, so one person, it couldn't, I mean, it couldn't be Troy, any of us couldn't have been. The, have that authority that has to be as a result of the county commission or the county commission, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so we can't right. assign that we can't assign that duty to one any one person. Well, I think usually <coughs> there's progressive estimates. That's how much they work they've got done. Mm -hmm. So then they bill, you know, for that estimate. But you guys all approve, you know, paying on the bill. <coughs> well, and, and actually. The progressive estimates are just, you know, how much work they've got done to date on the contract. I, I, I mean, I'm just reading the document no, you want us to sign. No, but the yeah. progressive estimate is just a, it's a progress report. I know, but it's a change order, it's, isn't it? It does, yeah. Huh? A change order isn't. A no. A change order is, involves money. That's something I, mean, I, I don't disagree with what's going on, but if we find a document that says one person has the ability to do that, then we approve one person to have the ability to do that. And we can't do that. I'm just saying the document's wrong. I don't. I don't think the, the duties are wrong other than that. He can oversee the the progressive estimates, but not a change order. Yeah. Is what you're getting at? Mm -hmm. Because if if the project cost can't go up without the involvement of the county commission. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we need we need to re redo the rewording of this document. Why is that important to be in there? <laughs> I'd have to look at the local government manual again. To, and then we've always given Wayne the, the ability to oversee the project. I just we've never seen this document before. And this document yeah, as far as approving the change orders, yeah. yeah. We've we approved him as being the uh, responsible agent. Yep. He's never seen that. We've never given him his, we've never yeah. defined his duty. Yeah. Right. And I think that's how those duties are probably defined in their, in their manual. Well, okay. then they'll have to be changed. Well, just take, about that change just take the change order language out of there. Right. Let's prove it. I mean, I don't know why Wayne got the responsibility. <laughs> no. I mean, if there's some change order or something, I want you guys all involved. Yeah, Wayne's yeah. You're not going to go straight up to do it. Yeah, and I think even you know, like up in Ramsey County, Kevin's typically responsible. Well, I guess he's always responsible to charge for the Unless the change order involves a bug. I just bought one. I'm jealous. <laughs> Not a bought that, it's a beauty button. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you approve me being the responsive in charge with the change of the description. Yep, just cross all the change, change order. Change order. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or, or could we add a approved chamber with the concurrence of the, of the commission sure. or something like that? I just want to make sure that we can yep. meet the state requirements of yep. what the responsible charge does. Yep. We're all pretty accessible. If we need to have a meeting quick, we right. can do that. <coughs> Is there any further discussion?
suppose we should either amend the motion or let it die. Easier to kill it. Is there any discussion? Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. Opposed, same sign. Aye. Motion <laughs> fails. <laughs> Thanks, John. <laughs> Stupid, I'm just slow. <laughs> 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 Imagine those, those two lines can burn. Okay, try that again. You just want to come back with another document? Or? No, he's just going to add As um, with the approval or concurrence of the county commissioner after the change order language. So he's just going to add that if we just want to approve an amended version. I guess I would just insert with concurrence of the county commission right at, before in writing and after change orders, right? Mm -hmm. you want to put it with with concurrence of the county commission after writing and between the tenants and the writing well i thought it'd go in after orders and before in writing or not okay i don't know yep what do you think are you going to make this change or is this me um again i think it's going to be a pdf so okay So I make a motion we accept the responsible charge uh, certification document with the change made to read and change orders with concurrence of the county commission in writing. Comma, attend all project, key project meetings. You want that in the motion, correct? That's the motion, yep. That is the motion. That is is there a second to the motion? Second. Seconded by Dale, is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Uh, this is the next item on the project to be the ENSF permit. Um, and I don't know, it, we sent an email to the ENSF people to ask them if uh, we even needed a permit to work within their right away for the rail in, in Sutton there to just to do that seal coat work but they basically for us to work with them there right away you have to have a permit on that basically no matter what so their their permit fee is eight hundred dollars and we're I mean we're only gonna be there a few hours at the most to seal the next to the railroad tracks but that's what their process is. So I guess we need to be able to approve to spend that money on it. It would have to come from the county. 
Did we get did this did I send that their permit process stuff? No. That can't be a that can't be a project cost. Well the design is local funds come funds anyway, so it is it would be the same way. So we only need to encroach on the their right away during the design portion of this? No, it's for the construction. The the contractor will have to have their own railroad insurance that they'll get. Right. Um, but so this is part of that process. Okay. If the it can take about two months to get those. So with us bidding it in March, that may not cut into their deal, but to have them to, have, to, to put it on the contractor's shoulders, it could delay the project rather than having it done when you want it to be done. So if we do this, they don't have to? Right. They'd still have to get their insurance, but they wouldn't have to get the permit. And I guess a lot of the local public agencies have been doing that. And I, I do have that filled out here. <coughs> the application for it. How does it work when the cone blades in the railroad right away? <laughs> yeah. You have, to have you, two, it. you have to have a two million dollar bond to, to have your blade down in there. Really. So you have a pretty high bond requirement if you work for them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The insurance is expensive. So that's we, that that net cost is a contract requirement. So could we make the cost of this a contract requirement? I think if you do that, though, it would cut into their construction season, and it might cost more. I guess since the since your local federal aid is still, you don't lose that if you don't use it. I, it seemed, I think it would be a good idea to spend it ahead rather than depend on the contractor to get it done when, when they're probably expecting the county to do it. No, no. Could could the county do it and pass the cost on to the contractor? Did we do this when we did the overlay? I don't know if, that, if it was a, a process that they required then. That was about five years ago. Yeah. But again, could, could we pass, could just be a cost passed on to the to the contractor that was awarded the contract? I don't think so. Don't we have easement to, to, to be there? I guess if it's like everywhere else that I've worked with, uh, the railroad was there first, so they, it's there. That's what they say. Yeah. No, I know that. I mean, like even. I know that, but when you build infrastructure, you typically have an easement. You don't seal on their right away. Yeah. Yeah. The other no, way. No, I'm just here. Yeah. What I, I'm getting at. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I mean, I, I've I've gotten lots of easements from people in my career. Part of that easement is to be able to come back and maintain the infrastructure that was put on that easement. Why wouldn't that be part of the whole thing? I mean, I don't get uh, buying a permit to do maintenance on something that's been there. F yeah. I don't I, get it. Don't so what happens if you don't go remember doing it? What happens if you don't what happens if you don't do it? So for <clears throat> what so we are well, I guess this is to ensure that that we are that the the railroad is covered when we're working on the section of road. No, 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 no. This is a permit to exit to to come onto their property. Mm -hmm. What what their property is what? The, the, the railroad right away. I had yeah, the railroad right away, but it, it's also our road then. It's also a public road. That's then. my point. Right. We so have an easement to be there. Then we have a we prov that easement should contain the right to maintain. Does every car or truck that passes it over that railroad property have to have insurance to pass over that property? That's I mean that's what we're talking about the top of the road here, correct? We're not talking about insurance. We're talking about a permit. Yeah. To step there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the top of the permit application says application for roadway roadway surfacing or resurfacing. And I, I guess we had a similar project in the city of Moorhead where the, the guy you know, sent me an example from there that basically they were doing a mill and overlay. They had, they had to do it there too. And they were doing it to expedite the project. Because say if we have a contractor bid this, they bid it in March, 
their contract from DOT probably won't be given to them until early uh, um, April. It's usually about three to four weeks. So then they get their insurance. You know, they think they're good to go in May, for instance. If they have to go back and get this, and it's a two-month process, then that would put them out in J July, and their sealed season only goes really to the end of August. And, and the permit, the permit is just the first step in the insurance, the bond to be able to work on this on the top of the road, right? Which which every which every already should be covered under eminent domain. It's been there more than twenty five years. I don't have to have a permit if I drive my vehicle across it or insurance. How does I don't get it? I think the issue is that some of the railroad right away was acquired before statehood, so like your statutory easements and stuff don't apply to them. The point is, how can anybody drive across their property then yeah. without, why does it just apply to a construct piece of construction equipment? Why isn't it a combine? Why isn't it a bicycle? Yeah, well, um, it's construction, I guess, is what they're looking at. Even though a seal code is really more maintenance than construction, it's, it's, well, well by their rules, it's roadway reserve. In, 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 our, in our relationship with the railroad, to be adversarial to the county seems to be in their, probably not in their best interest because we do them a lot more favors than they do us it doesn't make much sense we start building them for the 300 feet of snow we plow off the right yeah, yeah. <laughs> so every, every time we cross that do we better send them a bill then for the if it's theirs it's theirs plating right up to the tracks yeah. have 150 feet on each side most places plus it's around the curve yeah. and 75 on each side I don't know if this is something that just came up recently in the last few years, or yeah, I guess I've never heard of it before. It's been well, they hire a different, they hire a company to manage their properties. Yep. yep. And they milk everything they can and everybody that comes along that they can get away with it. And I suppose eight hundred dollars isn't a big enough number for anybody to push back very hard, so they get away with it. That, that's the only thing I can think of. Be, because it's not uniform. It, it's Again, anybody can use that road. It's eminent domain by now. It doesn't matter if they're here first or not. So, I mean, again, I think the easiest way to do is pay it and pass it on to the awarded contractor. Which doesn't matter because we'd pay it anyway. No, but we, he, wants to pay he wants to pay it out of the the 25 percent of the county share, correct? The um, design is is 100 percent. Or no, the design is 100 percent county. Right. And or, or the so the then we would pay the whole 800 if we if we pass it onto the project, we'd pay 200 of it, correct? Yeah, or yeah, a little less than that. It's 19.7 percent, yep. but still, even the total amount is coming out of your federal share. So I mean, it's it's your that money has strings attached, but it's your money either way. Add it, I think. Add it into the contract? No, I don't, I don't think you can. The, the railroad <coughs> costs that the contract wants to obtain later, that's a contract cost, that's a bid item. This, this wouldn't be. Three, Let me see the contract. <laughs> There's the application. The blue there is what they sent me back. The cover sheet for that. Shop one. That's 
sorry, you're leaving. The buyers and the buyers are the same everywhere. Right. Maybe not so much in South Dakota. Remember when we used to sell down there? <coughs> that was a long time ago, but there'd be guys in horseshoes buying cows. You know, you'd a lot of the local feed lots. Right? They were all on the moon. A lot of them. Well, Everdeen. What are your wishes, folks? Let's keep this ball rolling. Yep. <laughs> yep, what? <laughs> Lift up and don't seal room the right away. <laughs> Test patch. <laughs> so when's this car when's it gonna be awarded? March. March and when will it start? Bid opening is in March. March 1. March 8th was the bid opening. And when's the, when's the project start date? Well, they would, whenever the weather's warm enough and they, if it's their schedule, they can't start on a seal code in North Dakota after September 1st, which, but if they started, say, August 31st, they can finish it. Okay, but what, yeah, so how hot, how warm does it have to be to start? Uh, I think it's 60 degrees, isn't it? Surface temp? Or 70? 60 or 70 for surface temp. Okay, so by March 8th, March 8th, 8th would be 8 weeks, and 6 to 8 weeks for the permit. It would never start by May 8th anyway, then. Well, except that it takes about a month for the DOT to award the contracts. They get the contract. Well, if they get the bid, back. they know they're going to have the job, won't they? Push back another month, <coughs> and that's assuming they do things as soon as they get their contract. It probably might not be an issue, but you know, contractors typically don't. You know, if it's something that they're expecting to have already done, and basically this is you know be the same thing as having a 404 permit for a, something you're filling in the water. You, the contractors expect that the owner would have done that ahead of time. To allow them to be there. Expect but not required. Mm 
It's just something that expedites the project, I guess. It's just can eliminate the problem down the road. I say leave it up to the contractor. I think we should just do it. We're going to pay for it anyway. Yeah, I think let's bend over and take it from the railroad like we always do. I don't know how they can justify it. $800 processing fee to perform maintenance on a road. They don't have to justify it. Can they stop you from doing it? I don't know what their recourse would be if you don't follow that rule, but if I guess that the contractor is, yeah, the contractor might not work with it, you know, do it if, it, if they don't, that's not done. Right away. I mean, because they, they have to buy railroad insurance pretty often. I make a motion that we uh, move forward with the permit. Been moved by John that we move forward with the permit process for the railroad crossing. Is there a second to the motion? Second. Seconded by Dale. Is there any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? <coughs> Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote, John. Aye. Dale. Aye. John. Aye. Troy votes aye. Motion carries. <laughs> okay. Right. Here's the um, application there. And then we're Can you sign it. I think we should make a note. Yes. Make a note of the cooperation with the railroaders in showing the county, yeah. and then let it be reflected in future meetings of them. Well, it doesn't cooperate with anybody. No, but, it, but if, we're, if, 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 the county, if, the, if the county is subject to railroad fees, then the railroad will probably be subject to county fees. So. There could be a lot of noxious weeds discovered along the railroad. railroad. <laughs> Not going to be a working partner with us then. <laughs> Next. Uh, I guess I'm going to need to take a completion date for that project. And that should be good for seal code. I guess I was uh, leaning towards August 31st. Just that eliminates it. That is a restriction. They can't, if they start a chip seal August 31st, they can finish it because they can't start after November 1st. I mean, uh, September 1st. But if we tell them that they have to be done by August 31st, then we don't, then we get out of that. How about we tell them there. they have to be done by July 31st so we don't have to go through what we did the last time? Mm -hmm. and the temperatures are too cold, we still have to get permission to do it and the drug out. And I don't know if we can affect that much. Hmm? You think we can affect that by sure, changing? Sure, we can give them the July 31st deadline. And, and maybe it would just stick it into their schedule earlier. Um, um, we can request that and see. Don't you remember it got past the date the last time? And, you know? I know they had to come take their signs down and come back in the spring and do it later. Yeah, so we, uh, we put rules in there, but no one goes by them. <laughs> yeah, the state gives them a pass on there. Yeah. So let, let, let's let's fudge it a little bit. Let's make sure this gets done so that the quality of the work is done for what we're paying for having done. I don't think so. They just they usually just email us and we ask the highway superintendent usually, but I figured he gets my lunch and put on it. And I didn't know that the last one had carried over and carried over, so it's good to know. Yeah, they had it signed up and I didn't get here and I'd come take signs down, come back in the spring. Well, but in between that time, they still didn't want permission to do it anyway. Right. And we wouldn't let them because it was past the... It was September 10th or something. Oh, yeah. Okay, next. I guess uh, it would be all right if, it, if they request that and they ask us why we've done that they have, we've had this happen before we're carried over and then if they take something in between, are we okay with that or...? Oh, they're either going to bid on it or not, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's what the DOT has will be asking us why we wanted earlier, at least that we, they did on our project in Devil's Lake. Uh, well, we can ask, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I suppose the answer would be to ensure that we get it done in the... Yeah. 
construction season. The construction period that, that is available. I mean, and maybe we can, part of our justification can be that we've already <coughs> we're submitting the permit, so that'll be done. Which mm -hmm. that's today. Okay. <coughs> well, for the OTA, you push back. I'll let you guys know. Sure. Otherwise, yep. we'll request that. Okay, on Hannaford Road, I guess I just gave you that same memo. I just put the cost that we estimated at the last meeting up to date. And I'm just going to look at that to what's the what's anticipated to cost and left to be paid on the box cover. And there's about 540000 like we estimated last time. So that should be good to go with that. Next steps on that would be I need to send it out to Wayne with uh, the application and location map for the application project information sheet that goes forward on to the East Central people for a project approval and then if they if they're all good with it and Brian Fuchs at DOT is good with it, then we'll um, I'll bring a cut and design contract to you. I, I don't didn't want to do that this time without having that project already approved by them. Okay. We don't have a contract on the book so we can't build the project so and uh we the Bidford survey work the shop there. There's a way to hand it out a sketch of that. Basically, the halfway between the building and the fire hall is a 50, leaves about 50 foot on the west edge of that lot. That little square lot's the fire hall? Yep. 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 And that actually sticks, the fire hall sticks about eight feet out into the right street right away. Oh. It was just an aside, I guess. but. It'll be about 20 feet, but it, and it's approximately 20 feet because it's not exactly 70 for half the lot. I mean, it's within a these are really close actually, I mean, within hundreds of what they're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So, I guess the description for that remainder the way we staked it, we staked it 50 feet even across the front around the fire hall square there. So, I, I would I emailed Wayne that too. That if you were going to buy that 20 foot strip, it would probably be best described as the west half of lot. The, the east 20 feet of that lot. The east, well, it'd be the west half of lot nine less the west 50 feet. Would be oh. That, that way there's no room for discrepancy there. There's no overlap. Because a lot of sizes are never, are usually not exactly what they're. <coughs> Flattered out, right? So, so yeah. So the the discrepancy that would be in the, in the part we're buying, not the part we can Right, right. And that's because we yeah, put the that's right. at a fifty. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what's the proposed? We're gonna. <coughs> the proposal is that the county buy the. <coughs> so what is it? Seventy. So the, those lots are how? North to south, and how many feet? 130. 130, 140. Okay. So you'd be buying 90 feet of lot 9 and all of lot 10? Is that what you're looking at? Well, no. that's 70, that's what I was asking. It, it, it shows 140 feet on the top. But 140 then, feet wide, and it's 50 feet deep. Yeah, right. the 25 foot lots, and there's two of them combined into one. Yeah. Or no, they're, they're 50 foot. Right. Oh, the, on the other side of the block, they're, they're, they're right. Yeah. They're just, yeah. yeah. So the size of the, the size of the east half of ten and the east half of nine is a is one hundred feet by seventy. By seventy. That's yeah. what you guys. That's what the proposal is to purchase. Wayne was. I think it is. I I, I went up and talked to uh, the owners of the fire hall, and they're kind of would like to sell it, but. At this time, they're not ready to sell. And I said, well, what about selling the 20 feet, the east 20 feet of, of the west half of nine? And well, didn't, they wanted to go on to other subjects. <laughs> so they do have some children that are coming home this, for Christmas. I thought, well, I got their phone number. Then as we looked, as I looked at it again, I thought, well, how about if we just get the east half of 10 and the east half of 9? 
we could build our building on that. And <coughs> we want to, because uh, there's like uh, five feet between the old building and the new one if we went to the east line for where it's taped up. There's quite a bit of boulevard in between the property line and the street. Yeah. There's no setback requirements in Benford? Well, on the east side, there, mu there must be, what, 40 feet between the boulevard and the center of the road? In the middle? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, it's, it's quite a ways. It's on the east side. Ways. It's a long ways. It so they wouldn't make you set it back? It would, no, it would be, it could be set back right on the property line. It can be? Yeah. Are you sure? Uh, yeah, everything else is that in Benford is that way. Right, and I guess that's kind of why I mentioned with the fire hall, it's down south end of the right away. So, I mean, we could actually face, put the building east and west and have the door on the east side. Good. And then that would leave you a bunch more room on the north side for parking. On the north side. Yeah. But uh, we don't have to decide that right now. What's our dimensions of the building again? 60 by 80? 60 by 40. 40 by 60. 40, 40 by 60. So if you put the building the 60 foot wide along the south edge of this property, that would leave you a bunch of room on the north side. Or you could put it on the north side and have the room on the south side, it doesn't matter. Because mm -hmm. then that would leave you that leave you 60 feet to park stuff there rather than 20 feet to the other. That's way. what I was thinking, if we moved it away from the corner, so it wouldn't interfere with people coming from the north and somebody coming from the west, you know, that they can't see it until they're right there. Or you could put it all the way up against the property line up here. Yeah. On the north side. And it wouldn't interfere at all. You'd have to put a culvert in the in the ditch there. That's a drainage that's a drainage from Bigford right. part of it. That would, oh um, pretty I'd nice talk, to have your door south though if you can. Yeah, south or east. And with that seventy by hundred we could easily do that. Right. Either way. And set it away from that. Because then I thought, well, maybe we don't need that old building. That would you know, allow us more room to put the new one on. And then we wouldn't be encroaching at all on that other owner's property. We just took that. We understand that they, they figured it was pathways between the two buildings. Half, the west half was theirs and the east half was ours. They didn't know that this was right. encroached by eight feet, whatever. <clears throat> so, I mean, another option just to get rid of that building, but <clears throat> either way, there would be enough room there. Plenty. Well, there was about five feet between the old building and, if I measured off, 40 feet to the pin to the east. Other abstracts or don't know that. I did talk with <coughs> uh, Lance Edlin owns the east half of town. And actually there's two lots there. It's, it's they just combined into that two twenty five and anyway and the city owns the east half of nine. And I asked them what the estimate would be for purchasing them and they said a thousand dollars a lot. So thousand dollars for property. That's the deeds and stuff that over on the property. Right, but as far as there's nothing that says uh, so many feet from here to there to whatever. I don't think I don't have one. This is this is the west half of lot nine. <coughs> yeah, that's the stand. So this came out of an abstract. Yep. So, so somebody has an abstract for this? I copied it off. Kelly. Kelly. Oh. <laughs> so I mean, Kelly can tell us what, if there's anything for the east half of nine, the east half of ten, real quick. Yeah, there isn't any. Well, anything for the east half. I don't think of nine. No, she won't do a title opinion. No, 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 no. So the answer is no, there's no abstracts on either one of these properties. 
I don't know that. We need to find that out before we build a building. <laughs> oh, certainly. We should get them to uh, Tom Aldjets and have a preliminary title built. <laughs> preliminary title opinion. Just so we know the chain of title has been intact. Otherwise, if there's something wrong with the title, um, it's harder to fix it the further you get down the road. Mm -hmm. What is what is that? And that's just a. What form is that? It's just an abstract. It, it shows it shows the it shows the chain of ownership from the time it was. Oh yeah, way back. Plotted, yeah. and you don't have to update it. You can a deed can be filed or, or a warranty deed can be filed, and you don't have to update the abstract. So then you don't you never know whether or not there's any liens against that property until the abstract is brought all the way forward. Or if somebody missed a step. Correct. <clears throat> if there's a contract for deed hanging out there and <clears throat> when the contract got satisfied, this we see this quite a bit in even in ag real estate. So you buy something from your dad on a contract for deed, the contract gets recorded at the recorder's office and then the <clears throat> the contract gets satisfied after ten years or whatever. Nobody goes and records a satisfaction and then old dad dies. And the rest of the kids say there's a contract for deed against this property, and you never paid dad. And it was going to go then, yeah. then you get to go round and round. Yeah. So it, it's just a good idea anytime real estate changes hands to get a title opinion, just to make sure that yeah. all the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed. And just by the nature of that, most of the time, I mean, this happens on property that isn't worth anything because it wasn't worth filing and going and getting the, doing the steps I mean, on it. that's not always the case, but it's yeah. more, likely more likely to happen yeah. in a lot in Benford yeah. than it is on a half section of farmland in Washburn Township. Yeah, or a square foot in Manhattan. <laughs> yeah, or that. <laughs> so the recorder's office wouldn't have that information? Huh? They do, Yeah. but they're not gonna compile it. You gotta hire a lawyer to do a title opinion. But the owner should, per Anytime you buy real estate in this part of the world, the owner usually has to provide a deed and an abstract. Then you take the abstract to Tom Aljets or somebody else that does that's a lawyer, and you have them do a preliminary title opinion. And then once the transaction is done, then you get the abstract updated so that your deed is in the abstract and then get a final title opinion done that then you know pretty well that it's yours and if you need to sell it, there's not gonna be an issue. So I think I asked about that, the east half of nine, which is the city's, and I don't know if there was- There may have three, never been an no abstract. documentation. Out. As luck would have it, we may be able to buy title insurance in Benford because that lady in New Rockford did herself a terrible disservice when the, all those lots in Red Willow got split up and sold from the Haynes family to the individual cabin owners. She, they were going to have her build an abstract for every one of those lots, which would have only been one page different from abstract to abstract, and she would not play nice, so they went and talked somebody in the right and title insurance for all those lots and she didn't get nothing. So now you can buy title insurance in Griggs County, you don't necessarily need an abstract. Right. It's cheaper to buy a title insurance probably than it is to create an abstract, depending on how many entries are on that property. But if there's an abstract, then it's easy. So we should find that out first. If there's not, then we can decide whether we want to buy title insurance. Usually the seller buys the title insurance. And then if you borrow the money to buy the real estate, 
then the buyer buys title insurance for the lender. They buy lender's title insurance. So in this case, you know, which is going to play into the cost of this thing, you know, and, and uh, if the if the owners of these half lots expect a thousand dollars at the end of the day, then the easiest thing to do is the county pay all the closing costs and write them a check for a thousand dollars, because there's going to be recording fees and title insurance or updating an abstract or something. Yeah. And this, these numbers are so small that you can't expect the seller to to bear those costs, in my opinion. I mean, we could ask them to, but they might tell us to go jump off of a cliff. Yeah. That's why I figured we would pay the costs and that stuff, changing of the title. We can, but if it would help us if we could get an abstract. If we can't, I think we have another avenue. But so we can't go forward then with the approval of. Even well, well I, I, do we have a purchase agreement with anybody? No. I mean, no. it would it would be nice to have that because if we got one of them and, not, and somebody else decided not to sell the other half a lot, then we probably don't want either one. <laughs> Or, well, yeah. What we what we could do is we could open a building fund account at one of the banks, and we could write a check, approve for the cost of the building, and put the money to get get out of this year's budget, put it into a building fund account fund account at one of the banks, and if this whole thing fell through, it could go back into the county treasury. But it doesn't need to leave the county treasury. You can go into a building fund in, within the county, can it? It's still going to be on the books, John. Yeah, I know. It's really not the way the budgets work. But, yeah, you can. I mean, there's been things done like that before. I think what the right thing to do, I think Sam or somebody or Wayne, you, I don't know, who, whoever, should call Tom Aljets and have them draw up two purchase agreements or go get two from Rob Lowe or somebody and just have the city sign one and whoever owns the other lot sign the Atlantis just so we all, everybody is on the same page. Yeah. yeah and yeah. then once those things are signed, we can set up a closing date two months from now and then fill in the gaps between now and then. Then everybody stays on the same page, and we know that we're not putting money down a rat hole if because nobody's going to change their mind once a once a purchase agreement's signed. That's what I think we should do. Right, and, and and all I was doing was inquiring. I didn't have the I didn't have the authorization to make any agreement whatsoever. I just inquired what the price would be, and brought it here. Um, so I think the step that we can take today is. We can approve a thousand dollars per half lot or whatever the number is that you got from them. We can have authorized Wayne to have two purchase agreements drawn up on these two property descriptions and present them to the owners. And if they get signed, then we charge ahead. And at the same time, try to find an abstract. So, so could we take, could we then amend this year's budget to reflect the $1,000, the $2,000 for the lots, the price of the building that Wayne's laid out here, and amend the road department budget to put a building fund within that budget? Why not? Okay. Then, then, then we can move forward. Uh, Lennis, he's in Jamestown, he doesn't know. Um, you know, there are some other lots in, available in Binford. People you got to deal with are kind of hard to deal with. But John Wakefield? <laughs> John Wakefield. So who, who owns the railroad track? I do. Or the I grass, bought it. I bought the all grass is planted? In well, actually, actually, I sold the north half of it to the... Um, Kevin got the middle part of that block, and 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 then the seed plant on the other side got the other one. But so, but there's there's plenty of room for a building on this property that's done the half or three quarters of the block that's left. So, 
Oh, south of Edland Avenue or Binford Avenue. Yeah. yeah. Right across from PV, the old PV place? Yeah, we're straight across, the, the whole block right straight south of the, of the county shop. All the way from road to road, from Main Street over, over in, uh, well, wherever yeah. that fence is around. Right. Yeah. But we'll get this done. I mean, this isn't, yeah. it'd be better if it stays where it's at. We have to pull over there and there's water closer than there's water right in the alley. Yep. Okay, can do that. So, I handed out the right. expenditures, you know, and it's just a guess on anything extra like the... So could we, could we add another $2,000 to the road gravel transfer? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Two. Two thousand. And then that would put that total at uh, twenty thousand six ten. Right. And the overall total at sixty one nine oh seven. All right. Thirty four. Yeah. yeah. So the discussion was um, Wayne has an estimated cost here of fifty nine thousand for the building and this, everything and yeah, right. transferring twelve thousand from the gravel funds and six thousand from the road contractor work funds. We increase that by two thousand to take care of the lots. And then we would open a building fund within the road department budget of sixty one thousand nine oh seven thirty four. A non discretionary mm -hmm. building fund. You made that a motion? No, I just uh, that was just uh, just put it out there for whatever you guys think. Still, that would still probably leave some inc incidental costs when we get around to building this next spring, but it shouldn't be hard to find a little bit of money in the, in the road budget to do that. Well, is it going to have to be built up a foot? I mean, is there going to be $10,000 of site work, or how is that going to go? I don't know. We should have some pole there, don't we? we got gravel right there that we own. Oh, we own that gravel there next to town? Somewhere. Mm -hmm. A big pile west of town. Trucks and people in the back are in the that part covered. Yeah. Laser? Laser. The problem, yeah, depending on what we put in the building, there might have to be a culvert on the east side. That's, you know, that's not a problem. Did you say bucket? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ridge of bucket. <laughs> Um, Are you wanting to make amend this year's budget and roll these numbers into next year's budget? No. Well, well, yes. It would it would amend this year's budget to 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 create the building fund, and the building fund then is 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 not part of the budget, and it, it's separate. So then it would roll into next year's budget, but it wouldn't be part of the overall budget. It would be money that actually was brought forward. That's kind of why I wanted to put it into a separate account somewhere. But so that there's actually a, a We'll have to right account there. for it on the books anyway. It doesn't oh, yeah. really matter. Yeah. Could we just write the check and then sit on the check until the first of the year, then deposit that check back into the road departments? <laughs> well, that's the way people run scams. We better not do that. <laughs> <laughs> even, though it's pr even though it wasn't a scam, but no. It, it, it can be done a bunch of ways, but... Doing it this way, then of course it, it counts as reserve and it pushes you up towards that the cap and reserve, which you're not going to have now. <coughs> the 
send in the hospital funds, so it's probably not a big deal. Okay. So that'll have to be a. I, I, I make a motion that we create the a general building fund reserve within the road budget to a total of sixty-one thousand nine hundred seven thirty-four <coughs> using the current funds left in the building budget. <coughs> Six thousand dollars from the road contract work, and fourteen thousand six ten thirty nine from the gravel fund. Is there a second to the motion? Second by Sean. Is there any discussion? Any discussion? Any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. John. Aye. Dale. Aye. Sean. Aye. Troy votes aye. Motion carries. <clears throat> Would it be easier to move that into the general to carry that? Because yeah. it, it, you know, at the end of the day, it's going to be a county asset anyway. It's not going to be a road department number. Yeah, you're right. I mean, our balance sheet's comprehensive. It's, we don't have an auditor's balance sheet and a <coughs> road department balance sheet. The, the, only, the only thing I can think of is is the commingling of funds because there's both federal, state, and county funds within the road department, and we never have broken out then how much of this money, this 61000 is each entity's. You know, well, none of that's federal and state money, though. No, 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 but they are. We could, but for <coughs> for the end of the end of the year, <coughs> maybe we can just do it this way, and then when when on the other side we can bring it into the treasury. If we want it to. Maybe. Yeah. We could always ask. <laughs> yeah. I, know. I know. Speaking of that, I was oh, we, we need one. We need one more. Concerning this thing, then, I think we should authorize Wayne to spend the remainder of the gravel budget purchasing gravel so that we have it on there. So we spend it in this year's <coughs> budget cycle rather than trying to transfer that money over. It just makes the whole... Buy, buy some from Tom or one of them piles of them? We've got quite a bit We've got on three already. Piles up. They probably have to put some more up <coughs> for us somewhere. Yeah. Prepay like we did before. Well, we don't need an action for that, do we? No, you can just go ahead and do it. But I mean, if you want to prove it, you'll have to prove it anyway. Yeah. <coughs> but it should be done before, before the, first. the end of the end. Yeah, we want it. Move. It just makes the whole budgeting process so much easier. Then that money is there. It doesn't. Then that gravel, that product is there. It doesn't have to comply with the seventy-five percent reserve. Portion of the money, and it's just easier to do it that way. Okay. And it's a product that's never going to go down in price. Right. There's not a chance that we're, and there's not a chance we're not going to use it eventually. Right. Or sell it. We can sell it. We do anything wrong with it. So, did we make a motion to purchase that building to cash and carry? Not yet. I don't think we have. So, I should, I want to be able to tell them yes, we accepted your bid because. It's been a while ago. <coughs> Can't really do that until we got the lot all in order to do that, can we? <laughs> Not unless we buy them from John if something falls yeah, through. That's true. I mean, I think we'll be able to find real estate in Benford one way or the other, right? Probably. I would think so. Yes, I mean, yeah, I mean that house that just got burned down on the west of there, that, that would be <coughs> a pretty good place for the show. Who owns the lumberyard? Mark. Mark That'd be a real nice spot for it. We're out with the highway. <laughs> <laughs> that, there's a building there, let's just park in there. <laughs> Could build it it's an office in there. 
mile and a quarter north of the junction, you can do that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of really expensive. Well, then you want a heated one, one, right? <laughs> um, but I think we should, if accept the bid, and so I can notify them. Well, if we're going to do that, then, we, then we don't. Then, then we can pay for it before the first of the year. Well, it's kind of nice to have that. That they got to come and work to get their money. Yeah. Yep. You're right. Except the bid with the. Spring building date then? Do you know who seconded his motion? Which one? Um, to like set up this fund. Hmm? Do you know who seconded your motion? Sean. Okay. I couldn't remember. Was there a down payment upon acceptance of that? No. There was a down payment to the uh, contractor. I think that was, I don't think it's until he starts. So. <clears throat> you guys want to commit to that building? Well, it says upon acceptance and to schedule. Twelve thousand. Let's see, eighty-seven hundred dollars upon acceptance to schedule, and twelve thousand upon completion of the proposed project. That's from the contractor. Why would we give him eighty-seven hundred dollars six months before he starts? <clears throat> I could see a couple of weeks before he starts, maybe if he wants. Yeah, if he's going to start spending money, yeah, I can see that. But I money. hope he already has a hammer. He's got to hire somebody to help. <laughs> Two guys this time. Yeah, I don't know if I'm comfortable doing that ah, six months before. I've been reading about that. So this last, on the Cooperstone building, we paid him $4,700 when he started the first sure. day. And then well, I can see, I mean, if he's here. Because he's coming back or he did get a hotel. Or whatever. Right. No, I mean a deposit on materials is fine, but I, I don't think a deposit on labor is, is, I've never done that. I have never either. So, is it all one agreement or is they separate agreements in the labor and the materials? No, cash and carry put in the materials. Is of thirty thousand one fifty seven thirty four, mm -hmm. and the contractor twenty thousand seven hundred includes the footings, supplies, the rebar, and stuff for the, for the footings twenty thousand. The contractor's twenty thousand dollar bid includes the yeah footings. So that's probably what he needs some money for, maybe. I don't know. Well, to buy the concrete and rebar and everything. Not going to do that yet. Mm -hmm. It's not going to do that yet. No, not yet. No, uh, we wouldn't pay him until. Okay. <coughs> Maybe instead of approving that today, maybe you should call those guys and ask them that question for sure. I mean, I hate to agree with some, agree to something and then say, no, we're not going to do that. Because yeah, that's not really an agreement. <laughs> and, and that doesn't really make any difference if it's done now or after the first of the year. The, 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 what well, we're after was the money to, to have that available. So that, that's going to be iron. I think you should make a couple phone calls before we approve that thing, Wayne. Okay. okay. Yep. <coughs> Who knows, maybe, you know, hopefully things won't go up, you know, the cost of cheap, cheap metal or the wood or the Well, if the raw material price goes up they, and they don't have it in their inventory, we're going to end up paying the increase anyway. Otherwise, 
because they can't do it for nothing. No. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 That's all. There's that new uh, federal aid funding package. In there. Yeah, that, that's what I had a question on. So. And the seal quality estimated cost is three hundred thirty thousand yeah. dollars. Over to the right, and the federal aid that is seven thousand is that what is that what is in our account? That well, that's the federal money that the state keeps to do the matching. Okay, then, but so that is, that is a, that's in our that account the, for that project. It's in Graves County's. Okay, so then above that where it says 2019 estimated allotment of 126,609 and then 2019 estimated total of 324,583, what is that? Yeah, that first that money is what's in the account before they get the 2019 uh, money in from the federal government. Because we were, oh. we didn't have hardly anything in there. I see. No. I see. So the estimated made an allotment was 126, and then the estimated total would be 324. I got it. So our allotment's 208 or something? No, I, th I think it, well, it was 126. But they didn't, were going to increase it by, when we were out to that meeting in Bismarck, they said there or there was probably two. be about $50,000 more than what had been in the past. That's right. more than 50000 yeah, it'll be like. I don't have the last uh, one we had where we had only like two thousand dollars, or we were, you know, last year. Right. I mean, right. right so now, then, yeah, right now, there'll be three hundred twenty-four thousand in there. After, yeah. So, so there was two hundred eight in there to start with, and they're going to give us another on one twenty-six. One hundred ninety-eight in there to start with. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But that's so then that's used for the 70 or the 80 percent, a little over 80 percent. Yeah, 80.9. And then we give our 19 percent from here. Okay, so the 267 is 80 percent of the 330. Yeah, because they they won't pay more than 80 percent of that, okay. 330,000 or whatever the bids are. Yeah. But then we had. We had agreed, you know, to borrow ahead, so right. yeah, I don't know if that, I don't think this includes the borrowing ahead, oh, and which we won't need to if that's the... Right, yeah, depends on all. But they didn't allocate anything to the federal bid bridge fund program this year. Well, there's federal aid is 970,000. Right. Yeah, that's for 21. That's our bid date is that if we, because each year we put it back for the Decker Bridge. Right, so are we, are, yeah. So that much money is available to spend on that $1 million. If we, have, if we kick in another 229000 Whatever it is. Well, and, that, and I don't know if that means that money is actually set aside yet, if it's in that 21 year. Well, you have to apply it. Yes. And then they... Yeah, like if somebody oh, it else goes, it goes in the overall pool, you'd be able to apply yeah, for it. Yeah, if something right. else has priority over it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah I got it. Yeah, those are ranked, and the, the right. other stuff is here out here allocation. That's yours. The right. bridge funds aren't. Okay, so th this this is ours. Yeah, this isn't. This right. this this goes this that's goes in, in a playoff with all the other projects. That are yeah. yeah, yeah, that's just eighty percent of your estimated cost. Got it. And then how it works for payments of the contractor, the state pays everything and then requests the reimbursement from the county for your 10%. Yeah. Got it. <clears throat> Do you guys have a special meeting at the end of the year or something? I have it on or the just agenda. Wait for two weeks. What's that? We're back on cash from cash and carry and. Anderson, sweet. That doesn't matter anyway. No. I don't know if we need to do that before the first of the year anyway, but mm -hmm. I guess that <clears throat> that can be one of your questions too. I know a lot of times, you know, they 
contractor, the bid is only for so long. Right, right. That's typical. You know. But so if you accept the bid, they've got to go by that. But if you know, in that thirty days, or whatever. right. All right. Okay. Well, you noticed that Samantha and I <laughs> talked Batch. about what yeah, we're going to work, work today. <laughs> I didn't know this <laughs> <laughs> you got a cap with ear flaps that matches it, though. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> well, Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. Have a good weekend. Yep, you too. We'll see you guys. Thanks. Merry Christmas, Wayne. Yep. <clears throat> The water board member that Fred took over for his term is expiring, so we need to reappoint Fred for th another three years if, if you folks would like to do that. As he's willing to do it. Tom said he is willing to stay on there for another term. Who will appoint Fred Lukens to the it's County Water Resource District for another three years. Second. Moved by Dale, seconded by Sean, to appoint Fred Lukens for, to the Griggs County Water Resource Board for another three-year term. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we proceed to vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. <clears throat> um, we are in the process, obviously, and, and I'm sure everybody is aware, <clears throat> of forming a social service district with Nelson County. <clears throat> Mary had contacted me a while ago and um, informed me that She's proposing a five-person board for the district, three from Nelson and two from Griggs. And um, for now, anyway, I would recommend that myself and Sean stay on that board so the commission has a good under idea of how that thing is working. Otherwise, if we have people at large on there, it seems like we might lose touch with the whole process and before it, until this thing gets proven, I would, I kind of want to stay involved. I guess, and I and I did talk to Sean, and he has agreed to <coughs> to do it. So that's my recommendation. Do we get a lifetime appointment? No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I make a motion to appoint Sean and Troy uh, to serve on the new joint social services board. Is there a second to the motion? Second. Seconded by Dale. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Do you want to let Mary know that? Absolutely. Thank you. I poked my head in there today, but she's, she's only here on Tuesdays and Thursdays typically, right? Yeah, that I have to I mean, catch her and just that, to... That was the plan. Old courthouse, new courthouse. Um, I'm sorry, can we move sp special meeting before old courthouse, new courthouse? Um, sp special meeting. You guys always have, um, I've always conned you guys into having a special meeting at the end of the year to pay the remainder of the bills for 2018. You don't I just, like being conned. <laughs> yeah, that's not going to happen. 
please. Oh, we're used to it. <laughs> <laughs> I ask that you please um, have a special meeting on. Um, we would like to do it December 27th um, so that we get those bills done and then we can start closing our books for the month and then for the year. Thursday? Yes, please. Can we do it like 3 o'clock or 2.30 or something? We can do it whenever. When, when does that work for you, Sean? That'd be this coming Thursday, right? Next Thursday. Next Thursday. Yeah, yeah it's this coming Thursday. Yeah, uh, yeah. What time? Does what time not would matter. you get back to town? Right. 2.30, 3 o'clock would probably work. 2.30? 2.30. Okay. Yep. Perfect. Thank you so much. Because it isn't going to be a long meeting. Anymore. No. No. I think we have social service on Wednesday, too. No, I came this Wednesday. Nobody was here. <laughs> <laughs> so why not take next Wednesday? <laughs> That's the 26th. Yeah. It just happened. The email came on Wednesday. I'm like, oh, shit, that's short. And I'll just... Stay <laughs> at 2.30. Thank you. That's what reminded me that Mary had asked me to do this a long time ago and I'd forgotten. No, that didn't remind me. <clears throat> Sitting in the movie theater with the grandkids waiting for the Grinch to come on. And <laughs> you thought social service? Because <laughs> <laughs> Mike and Irene Anson came in to, see, to watch the movie and I thought, oh God, Irene, social services. <laughs> Mary <laughs> and I have sat in... I write in the theater. I email. I emailed some of them because I knew I'd forget again. Okay, old cordos, new cordos. We have one of each. Unfortunately, <laughs> you're right. Have you heard anything else from any issue? No. I'll get a hold of them and get. I'll try back. Get in touch with them again. Anybody else have anything courthouse wise? Future business. Do we need to talk about uh, getting an auditor right away the first time? That's it. There we go. Okay. I think we should contact Harold. Harold immediately after Christmas and tell him we want him here to audit this thing in January. Get her done. Middle day in January. So we get this thing out of the way the before March the budget party. starts again. Okay. <laughs> yeah. um, do you want me to put that on future business? Isn't some of his... Well, put it up. Based on next meeting, I guess, first one in January. Put it on the agenda for the next yeah. regular yeah. meeting yeah. on January 4th. Year, whoever else a fair board. Yeah. You want Harold here on no. that meeting? No. We'll or just to talk about it? No, we just it. want you to. Okay. Yeah, the first meeting, so, so we get him notified that we want this thing done. Okay. Or or we can have somebody else. Pretty soon we'll be having two audits at once. Okay. Anything else? Is that a motion? <laughs> Here's my second. <laughs> All in favor say aye. Aye. <laughs> Meeting adjourned at 3 p.m. Next meeting will be a special meeting on Thursday, December 27th at 2.30 Next regular meeting, January 4th at 2.30, uh, followed by another regular meeting on the 18th at 2.30.